This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey everybody, it's 12.47 p.m. on July 15th, 2022, and I just returned from possibly the world's first time traveler's party. Okay, I'm actually really nervous that somebody might be here. Holy crap, somebody's waiting up there. No way. He stopped right in the middle. You guys here for the party? Yeah. On June 28, 2009, Stephen Hawking went to a cocktail party where he was the host and the only person that showed up. And he sat there under a banner that read, Welcome Time Travelers. So why was he the only one that showed up? Well, the reason is because he only sent out the invitations after the party was already over. The logic for doing this for Stephen Hawking was that his invitations for this event would likely survive for thousands of years, maybe even hundreds of thousands of years in the future. And any time travelers in the future would likely be inspired to go to this original event back in 2009 and meet Stephen Hawking there to show that time travel was indeed possible. But here's the problem. I don't think Stephen Hawking had the intention of keeping it confidential whoever showed up. Likely he would have shared it with the scientific community. So I'm gonna try this with a different angle. I'm going to invite you and everybody who watches this video in the future, maybe many thousands or hundreds of thousands of years in the future, to come to my Time Travelers event. My Time Travelers event is going to be completely confidential. So I'm not going to reveal who actually comes to the party. So here is your formal invitation. There may be time travelers among us already, so I want you who watch this to share this with everybody that you know in order to come to this event in the past. I even made invitations. This is Time Traveler's Party. Enjoy complete confidentiality. Come and join me in the past on July 15th, 2022 at 1045 AM at the center of the Tillicum Crossing Bridge in Portland, Oregon, United States, 97201. Now, unfortunately, I can't share all the footage from that event because the invitation for it said it would be completely confidential for anyone that showed up. Now, how successful this party was for me depends on you sharing this video with everybody that you know out there. And if you're not convinced that this could be possible, let me share a little bit about time travel that we know of already in physics. We already know that in Einstein's general theory of relativity, it allows for time travel, a specific type of time travel called closed time-like curves. For example, let's say we have a tunnel to the past with a black hole and a white hole. Let's say our black hole is here and our white hole is here. So a closed time-like curve would look like this. I'm just gonna roll this ball and watch what happens. You can see that it went in the wormhole to go back in time to come back and hit itself to go into the wormhole. This type of time travel is called self-consistent. It follows Novikov's self-consistent principle. And basically what this means is it solves the grandfather paradox, which is that let's say I'm a time traveler and I travel into the past and I kill my grandfather. So that means that I could never have been born to go back in the past and kill my grandfather. Let's say that the wormhole is actually right here. So that if I send it forward, it actually just sends it right through the wormhole. So it can pass through the wormhole, go back to the past, but then it hits itself going into the wormhole and knocks it out of the path that it needed to go to go in through the wormhole. So that's a paradox. So how do we solve that paradox? It means that if you're able to go back into the past, you can only be self-consistent. You can only cause something to occur that already occurred in the past that caused you to go back in the past to begin with. So you can't actually change the past. For a lot of people, one of the problems with the self-consistency principle is it means that the time traveler actually has no free will. But actually, scientists have found that it may be possible for time travel to occur and also keep these closed time-like curves self-consistent, but allow you to keep your free will as well, as long as it's within some bounds. So let's say in this case, our ball has some free will. It can actually choose how it wants to knock the past ball from going into the wormhole. Now it has to stay within the bounds of self-consistency, meaning it can't knock it completely out of the way so it can't enter the wormhole. But it can knock it a little bit different. It has a little bit of choice of how hard it wants to hit it, so it can knock it so that it goes over here or over here or over here, but it just can't knock it out of the bounds completely. And actually scientists have run this simulation and found that there's actually endless possibilities in which these balls can interact with each other and not knock it out of this causal loop. So what this would mean is that it may be possible for you to travel back in the past and meet your grandfather and take him out for lunch, but you'll never have the thought or want to do anything that could make it so that you never traveled back to the past and the future to meet him. So it means that your free will if you travel to the past 
is bound within some confined range. This sounds a little bit uncomfortable for us that are used to being confined within some bounds for our free will. But actually, you're always bound like this. For example, we have physical laws. No matter how much you feel like you want to fly or you have the will to want to fly, you can't just fly off the ground. You're bound with some, within some physical laws to not be able to do that. So it may be that if you're able to travel into the past, you're bound by some other physical laws that keep you from being able to do something, even if you wanted to. You can see that some of these issues with traveling in the past can actually be solved, but there's actually some other issues that I haven't talked about. For example, let's go back to our rolling ball experiment here. You can see right at this point that there's actually two balls in the picture here. So where did this other ball come from? Suddenly a new mass just appeared in the universe and hit the other ball to make it go into the wormhole to begin with. So the question is, where did this new mass come from? And it's not just mass that we have to deal with. For example, let's say that I write down Einstein's famous equation E equals MC squared, and I travel back in the past to give it to Einstein, and so he writes it down and gets that idea in his head that that's how he solves a lot of problems. It didn't come from me because I got it from Einstein, but I traveled back in the past and gave it to Einstein, who then gave it to me, who traveled back in the past and gave it to him. So where did the information for it even come from? It just appeared out of nowhere. So this seems to break laws of physics right away, where things can just appear out of nowhere. But if scientists are correct about the Big Bang, then we already know that things can appear out of nowhere. In fact, all of the mass in our known universe appeared out of nothing, a singularity point of nothing. So this may not be such a weird idea that in these closed time-like curves, mass suddenly appears out of nowhere. But let's get real here. Is time travel really possible? In classical physics, we know that in general, time moves forward. But in quantum mechanics, that's not really the case. In general, it's most likely that things move forward, and that's why we always measure things moving forward in time. But on the quantum scale, things can actually move backwards in time or forward in time. There's actually been proposals to build quantum computers that use these closed time-like curves that are self-consistent in order to solve problems more quickly. Now, I wish I could share with you the exact results of what happened at the party, but I promised it would be confidential. But also, the results of this depend on the fact that you share this video and get the information out there for any time traveler that exists to go to my party. Before we end, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace helps you connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content. You can manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all in one easy-to-use platform. Squarespace will help you create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. You can use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. Also, you can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These new third-party tools can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. You can even display posts from your social profiles on your website and can automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash action lab to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And check out theactionlab.com where I have some cool science gear available there. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.